I think I'm going to love it here. Jenna Ortega is an American actress, a rising superstar of the new generation who is widely known for her role as the main character in the popular series Wednesday. She literally blew up social media with her incredible goth dance, winning the hearts of millions of subscribers overnight. We dedicate this video to this talented and fearless girl who got everyone talking. Wednesday Adams: How Jenna Ortega Lives and How Much She Earns Jenna Marie Ortega was born on September 27, 2002 in the California resort town of La Quinta on the Coachella Valley to the family of a successful businessman of Mexican descent and a nurse with Puerto Rican roots. Natalie and Edward Ortega got married at a very young age and immediately decided that their family would be big and close-knit. And their wish came true. Six charming children soon cropped up one after the other. Mariah, Isaac, Mia, Jenna, Alaya, and Marcus grew up surrounded by love, attention, and a healthy family atmosphere. Because of such a pleasant family dynamic, Jenna's talent manifested itself at an early age. By six, the girl knew that she would become an actress and nothing else. She was greatly impressed by the film Man on Fire starring Denzel Washington. Dakota Fanning, who played the main character's daughter in this thriller, shocked little Jenna. Her mother, in turn, showed consideration for this impulse and recorded a video with her daughter, which she then posted on Facebook. Word of mouth brought the news of the artistic girl to a casting agent, and he immediately contacted the Ortegas. At the same time, the expert did not immediately promise them mountains of gold, offering to start acting in a commercial. So Jenna first appeared on screens in an advertisement for Colgate toothpaste, talking about the importance of oral hygiene in a relaxed manner. She also appeared in TV commercials for McDonald's and Burger King. After two years of auditions, the first offers for film and television roles finally started to come in. Jenna's debut was working in episodes of the TV series Rob with Rob Schneider as the lead, CSI NY and Days of Our Lives. In 2013, came more experiences as she starred in feature films, including James Wan's Insidious Chapter 2 and the superhero movie Iron Man 3. In the latter, Ortega played a small role as the vice president's daughter, but it was a confident step into the future. Then, the young actress starred in the miniseries Dead Time Stories, the family comedies The Little Rascals Save the Day, and The Cookie Mobster, the series Rake, Know-It-All Nina, and several others and voiced the animated series Over the Garden Wall. But her first major role was in the television series Jane the Virgin, where Ortega played the main character as a child. Bien. Ahora haz que se vea como nueva otra vez. Vamos, anda, trata. I can't. Así es. Nunca puedes volver atrás, y eso es lo que sucede cuando pierdes tu virginidad. In 2015, Jenna starred in the TV series Richie Rich, where she got the role of the main character's girlfriend. And even though critics pulled the Netflix creation to pieces, from that moment, lead roles were now within her grasp. Next, the young actress appeared in the massively mixed-up middle school mystery and afterwards, but another project made many critics look attentively at this petite brunette. For two years, she acted in the comedy series Stuck in the Middle as the main lead. It is noteworthy that the Disney film company seems to have chosen its script specifically for Jenna. The thing is that Harley Diaz, whose story we follow, comes from a big family, and as the title states, Diaz finds herself stuck in the middle as the middle child. Jenna, just like her character, was born into a large family and is the middle child. Interestingly, this series predicted the future role for the actress when her heroine said, If my family was a week, I'd be Wednesday. We must say that the producer's bid turned out to be successful, and Ortega received her first win at the prestigious Imagine Awards, which celebrates the positive image of Latinos in the entertainment industry. In addition, her work was highly appreciated by Disney professionals, and in 2016, she received an offer to voice one of the main characters of the animated film Elena of Avalor. The role of Princess Isabel brought her not only several awards and nominations, but also a lot of young fans. Success with this audience was consolidated in 2017 when Jenna was invited to the star in the music video Chapstick by popular American blogger and singer Jacob Sartorius. Besides the video being very emotional, tender, and cute, 
It received considerable support in the media and gained great popularity. At the same time, rumors about the relationship between Jenna and Jacob were gaining traction among the public. It is unknown for certain whether this relationship was reality or fiction made up by PR people. On the list of the young talent's potential boyfriends were actors Isaac Presley and Asher Angel. Nevertheless, the girl herself denied all the relationships attributed to her so far. In general, she guards her personal life zealously and asks her fans to be understanding of that. In 2018, the film Saving Flora with Jenna in the lead role was released. Bend down, Flora. Come on, girl. There you go. Oh. It's a little rocky. So. Oh, in the center of the plot is an old circus elephant, which they plan to get rid of because she can no longer perform in front of the public. Then the resourceful daughter of the circus director played by Ortega decides to save her pet and goes on a long journey with her. The following year, the actress starred in the psychological thriller TV series You. Can you believe she put that spy software on my phone? Shit. You sure it was her? Who else would it be? So you're not going to tell her you know. Obviously not. It's way more useful if she thinks it's still working. This is what I get for trying to out-tech a teenager. Her character appeared only in the second season and was an annoying, sometimes strangely behaving girl, Ellie. In 2020, Jenna took part in the comedy horror film The Babysitter, Killer Queen. Having played one of the main roles, the shooting was a big source of stress for the young actress. When she joined the team, everyone was already well acquainted with each other and she had to overcome awkwardness and panic attacks. In the same year, the miniseries home movie The Princess Bride was released, which was filmed by the actors on their smartphones during the lockdown. In addition, Jenna was noted for her work in the animated science fiction series Jurassic World, Camp Cretaceous, voicing a character named Brooklyn. In 2021, two films were released, Yes Day, in which such masters as Jennifer Garner and Edgar Ramirez became Jenna's partner on set and the movie that discusses the pressing problem of shootings, The Fallout. The plot takes the viewer through a normal day of an ordinary 16-year-old schoolgirl Vada, brilliantly played by Ortega. I just said you don't even need to wear makeup. I... What was that? <laughs> was that a gun? The girl manages to hide in the toilet while there is a shooting on the school premises. She can only hear what's happening. The aspiring director, Megan Park, managed to not just film a drama about a sensitive topic, but also to show the psychological side of the tragedy. The crime itself takes up relatively little screen time while the open question of how can a child cope with the horror they experienced takes focus. The film makes you think about the topic of post-traumatic stress syndrome, which isn't fully discussed in society. The filmmakers masterfully bring to fore the horror of the fact that even after huge amounts of stress like that, the world still goes on. As for Jenna, the movie showed her not only as a serious dramatic actress but also made her look like a sensitive person. All because she had a similar experience in her life. According to her, she faced this threat in elementary school. Back then, the children were sitting in the classroom with the teacher and, in a state of shock, could only ask one thing, is this really happening? At the beginning of 2022, horror fans were not only pleased with the return of the legendary film Scream, but also Ortega's excellent work in it. Hello? Bonus question, Tara. Please stop! Do you think I made it inside your house before you could rearm? She received a prize from the MTV Movie and TV Awards for Best Scream. The viewers had clearly longed for a high-quality slasher movie which was reflected at the box office. With a budget of $24 million, the horror movie collected $140 million worldwide. In response to that, the filmmakers immediately announced the launch of the sixth part, which is scheduled for release in the spring of 2023. Jenna Ortega will reappear as high school student Tara Carpenter and will continue to escape from the chilling ghost face. This time, the film will take place in New York instead of Woodsboro, which should add even more dynamics and colors to the plot. Jenna is so convincing in these rules that in March 2022, another horror film with her participation was released. The American-Canadian film X, in which the actress played a lead role, was positively received by both critics and the audience, winning its fan pool. Although the film's success apparently wasn't enough for a sequel, in July, another film with the actress was released. 
American Carnage by the master of the genre Diego Halavis revealed to the world a non-trivial plot in which harmless at first glance, elderly people become monsters. Hey, she you into girls, I'll try to hit that too. Oh, yeah? Then again, maybe I could change your mind about that. Oh, relax, bro, I'm not gonna stand in your way. In November 2022, Tim Burton's new project Wednesday made headlines. Since you've abandoned me here, I've been hunted, haunted, and the target of an attempted murder. Ah, never more, I love you so. The first season of the series showed the most successful start in the history of English language Netflix shows. In the first week, the number of streams was 341.2 million. The role of Wednesday Adams was not easy for Jenna. Tim auditioned hundreds of applicants for the role and approved the actress only after she was able to show her remarkable acting talent. By the way, it happened remotely because the actress was filming in New Zealand. To the online edition, the girl came in the image she was shooting in, with a huge cut, glycerin sweat on her face, and fake blood on her hair. It was very important to the director that the main lead was similar to the actresses of silent films and could express strong emotions with just her eyes. On the set, he demanded that the girl behave as if she were a mannequin and harassed the makeup artist by checking the heroine's perfect pigtails almost with a ruler. Sometimes he lost his temper if the hair, in his opinion, didn't lie flat enough. Then he would take away the comb and make her image perfect himself. But Ortega wasn't born yesterday. She fearlessly entered arguments with the master about the role. Even mature Catherine Zeta-Jones, who played Morticia Adams, was amazed at the persistence and moral courage of the young actress. Jenna refused to use body doubles and, for the role, learned to fence, shoot arrows, and play the cello. And she also came up with her heroine's main shticks, not blinking in the dance in the fourth episode. The actress choreographed it herself. The result can be safely compared with the effect of an exploding bomb. A strange set of movements coupled with the eye acting instantly made the scene iconic. The song that young Adams danced to was called Goo Goo Muck and by the rock band The Cramps. It is noteworthy that downloads of this track on the popular Shazam platform soared by as much as 8,000% after the series' release. Lady Gaga's song Bloody Mary was also lumped with the general hype. TikTok users started posting their version of the dances using the song. In early December, the singer herself joined the viral trend by shooting a video inspired by the film. Jenna herself reaped decent benefits from her legendary dance. In just 10 days, the number of her Instagram followers soared by 10 million, and by December it exceeded 20 million, and Jenna won't stop there. In 2023, the comedy melodrama Miller's Girl will be released, in which Jenna plays opposite Martin Freeman. It will be followed by the film Finest Kind, which gave the actress an opportunity to work with such an unsurpassed professional as Tommy Lee Jones. And again, it will be a thriller. Just a glance on Jenna's filmography will show that she feels a special type of love for this dark genre. The actress admits that she is fascinated by the dark world of thrillers and horrors. She explains this by the fact that she is attracted to repulsive things and events that, on closer inspection, turn out to be something completely different. And shooting in bloody horror movies helped her overcome being a scaredy cat. One day she revealed her little secret to the press, saying that as a child, she dissected dead animals that she found in the backyard of her house. By the way, Jenna continues to live in the same house and has not yet acquired her own villa on the beach or a fashionable penthouse in New York. But her whole life is ahead of her, and as of now, the girl has accumulated $3 million in her account. Given the huge hype accompanying the release of Wednesday, we can expect that the payouts of the rising star will increase. The actress's current rates are not disclosed, but it is known that the leading actors in such Netflix projects receive an average of $40,000 per episode. In case of demand for the series, they can increase up to $300,000. Income is generated not only by filming movies and TV series, but also by advertising contracts. One of them came to Jenna thanks to her diligence. From the age of 14, she kept a diary where she wrote down the advice of makeup artists and hairdressers who worked with her. The records concerning the skin and hair health got the marketers of the cosmetic company Neutrogena very interested and served as a reason for their long-term cooperation. In addition, this experience prompted the young star to try herself in a larger project. In 2021, Jenna made a name for herself as an aspiring writer. Her book titled It's All Love is already selling like hotcakes. 
The work is basically a selection of inspiring excerpts from the actress's life which are presented simply and positively. The book's lead motif is, for every downfall in life, there is a rise, and there is always an opportunity to change the reality for the better. Fans are amazed and delighted by the fact that she wrote it as a 17-year-old teenager. In 2018, the girl shared on Instagram the happy news that she received a driver's license. Then she said that all she needed was a car. But now, Jenna has her own small car park. It includes the legendary German Audi Q3 crossover in black. And there are also reports that Ortega owns a BMW M235i, the price of which averages 45000 In addition to filming, Jenna turned her attention to acute social problems. In particular, Jenna is an ambassador of UNAIDS, the UNEN program to combat the spread of HIV. In addition, she protects people from discrimination based on nationality and supports children with cancer. Jenna Ortega is a rising star who is extremely interesting to watch and who undoubtedly has a great future ahead of her. She is lively, talented, and promising. However, due to the rapid rise of her career, the girl was deprived of a regular childhood and school shenanigans. Now, Jenna is very regretful that neither the prom nor the turbulence of adolescence happened to her. This is the price for popularity and success. But at the same time, she hopes that she can direct the unspent energy and emotions into creativity. In her youth, Jenna dreamed of becoming the first female president or astronaut. Perhaps one of these wishes will come true soon, albeit in movies. And have you already watched Wednesday? I, I think you could have held on the last image a little bit longer. That's what I was thinking. Sylvester Stallone. How Rambo lives and how he spends his millions. Sylvester was born on July 6, 1946, in New York. His mother Jacqueline, or Jackie, was a big fan of actor Tyrone Power and wanted to name her firstborn in his honor. But upon receiving the birth certificate, she saw a different name. The boy's father, Frank, gave him the name Michael Sylvester Gardenzio Stallone. Frank was an immigrant from Sicily, owned a small chain of hairdressers, and was infamous for his violent temper. Jackie, who grew up in a wealthy family of a successful lawyer, connected her life with a man who was a serial cheater and a tyrant at home. The first years of his life, Sylvester spent most of his time in the house of a nanny hired by his parents. He saw them on weekends, but these meetings were very reserved. The boy felt unloved. In 1950, the family had a second son, Frank Jr., and their wealth grew. But Stallone Sr. didn't change. So in 1956, Jackie filed for divorce. Sylvester stayed with his father and tried desperately to earn his love, but it was in vain. These, these your parents? Yeah, that's, that's both of them. Is this you? Yeah, that's me when I was eight years old. That's the Italian style when he was a baby. He had other problems like his birth defect. Due to an obstetrician's error, the left half of Sylvester's face remained paralyzed, which affected his speech. Pierce bullied him, so Stallone decided that he needed to build muscle mass. For this purpose, he used car parts from the landfill and construction materials. And when he got older, he almost lived in the gym. By 13, Sylvester was expelled from 14 schools because of his aggressive behavior. At 15, he found himself at the Charlotte Hall Military Academy. At the same time, he moved in with his mother, but she would ignore him. In her entire life, she only kissed her son once, right after the divorce. Back then, Stallone started boxing and became interested in soccer. After receiving a high school diploma, he entered college, where he began acting in the student theater. Then in 1965, Sylvester went to study in Switzerland at the American College while working as a personal trainer. Later, there was a theory that he did it to evade serving in the army and being sent to Vietnam. In 1991, the actor filed a libel suit against the tabloid and won the case. Upon returning to America in 1967, Sylvester enrolled at the University of Miami as a drama major finally deciding to connect his life with performing. In 1969, Stallone dropped out of the university and decided to conquer the New York theaters. The young man tried to act in films, but cameo roles didn't solve financial problems. At some point, Sylvester found himself homeless, sleeping at the train station for three weeks. Then he came across an ad about casting for the movie The Party at Kitty and Studs. It was an adult movie, but there wasn't much choice. For two days of filming in 1970, Sylvester received $200. When he became famous, 
The film was re-released as Italian Stallion after several other tiny film roles in 1971, the aspiring actor took part in an erotic theatrical production of Score, which was shown in 23 theaters in New York. For the most part, the directors refused the loan because of his speech impediment, so he earned his living as a doorman, bouncer in a restaurant, and even cage cleaner in a menagerie. Sylvester shared an apartment in New York with his girlfriend, Sasha Zott. They married in 1974 and later had two sons, Sage and Sergio. The youngest has been diagnosed with autism and doesn't appear in public. The elder Sage managed to star in several films, but died young in 2012 from a heart attack. In 1974, Sylvester got a role in the movie The Lords of Flatbush. According to him, for it, he received 25 t-shirts as a payout, after which he moved to Hollywood. In 1975, the actor starred in the films The Prisoner of Second Avenue, Capone, Farewell, My Lovely, episodes of several TV series, and the fantastic action movie Death Race 2000. For the latter, Sylvester received $700 a week. In March of the same year, the actor watched the Muhammad Ali fight and got so inspired that he decided to write a film script about a boxer who never gives up. He did not leave the house for 92 hours while writing, and the story was a success by pure luck. Stallone auditioned for another movie, but he was turned down. During the audition, he mentioned that he also wrote scripts, and the producers asked him to send them the Rocky script. At first, the studio offered Sylvester $150,000 with the condition that another actor would play the lead role. After long negotiations, the producers agreed that Rocky would be Stallone himself. For this, the actor agreed to reduce his payout to $23,000. They say that at that moment, there was only $106 in his bank account and he could not afford to keep his dog, so he ended up selling it for 50 bucks. To get the pet back, Sylvester had to pay $3,000 and promise a small role in Rocky. By the way, the Bull Mastiff also starred in the film. Look at his face, 64 fights. Look at that nose. See that nose? That nose ain't never been broken, 64 fights. I had guys busted on, I had guys chewing on, twisting and punching it. I mean, wow, boom, these guys are hitting my nose all the time. Never broke. I'm very proud of that. It's not rare. That's rare. Filming was difficult, as was the preparation for it. Stallone even quit smoking when he realized that he couldn't last five minutes in the ring without being out of breath. The movie turned out to be incredibly successful and received 10 Oscar nominations. At that time, Stallone became the third actor in history nominated for this award simultaneously for Best Actor and Best Screenplay. The creators won three statuettes, including one for Best Film. After the film Fist and Stallone's directorial debut, Paradise Alley, he released the sequel to Rocky. While preparing for filming, Sylvester agreed to compete with his coach in the bench press and seriously injured his pectoral muscle. Since then, half of his chest has been more sinewy than the other. In 1981, the action movie Nighthawks and the sports drama Escape to Victory about a soccer team of World War II prisoners were released. After filming, Sylvester said that playing soccer was harder for him than boxing in Rocky. By the way, the next film released was Rocky III, for which Sylvester received $7 million, followed by the premiere of First Blood. Don't push it, I'll give you a war you won't believe. Stallone, as the screenwriter, participated in the casting for the lead role, rejected several candidates, and eventually played it himself. He received $3.5 million for his work. In 1984, Sylvester received a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He also tried a genre change by starring in the musical comedy Rhinestone, for which he received $4 million, and an anti-award Golden Raspberry. For the sake of this role, he refused to work in the films Romancing the Stone and Beverly Hills Cop that became super hits, which he later greatly regretted. A year later, critics gave a lukewarm rating to the continuation of Rambo's story. Although President Ronald Reagan praised Sylvester Stallone for creating a new symbol for the American Army. For this film, the actor again received the Golden Raspberry. More success awaited Rocky IV, for which he received $12 million and the Golden Raspberry Ante Award as the worst director. See, I fight, so you don't have to fight. Because I want you to use your head for something instead of a punching bag like I do. 
Your head doesn't look like a punching bag. Meanwhile, Stallone's wife was tired of enduring her husband's numerous infidelities and filed for divorce, demanding compensation of $33 million. The last straw was Sylvester's affair with Bridget Nielsen. They met on the set of Rocky IV and got married in 1985, but the marriage lasted only two years. In the end, Bridget sued Stallone for a million dollars. In 1986, Stallone starred in the action movie Cobra, for which he received $13 million. Interestingly, the main character's car, a 1950 Mercury Monterey, belonged to Sylvester in real life. Nine years later, the vehicle was stolen from his garage. It was returned in 2009, and along with the car, he got $3 million in compensation. Stallone's next project was the film Over the Top for $13 million, and in 1988, Rambo 3 was released. For his work, the actor received $16 million and a golden raspberry. In the next few years, the films Lock Up, Tango and Cash, Rocky V, Oscar, Demolition Man, and Cliffhanger were released. And for each of them, the actor received $15 million. Sylvester starred in Cliffhanger to overcome his fear of heights. You want to do it? Do it. Now. You live with it. At the same time, Stallone appeared as a police sergeant whose mother meddles with investigations in the comedy Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Mom, stay out of this, okay? Yo, wave to the crowd. Mom, God damn it! Hey, you don't swear to your mother. Hey, butt out. Hey, my mother, relax. Hey, it's your mother, so you do what she tells you to do. What? This film, for which he was again awarded the Golden Raspberry, the actor considers the worst in his career. He agreed to star in it to spite Arnold Schwarzenegger, who spread a rumor that he wanted to get this role himself. Of course, Arnold was just pranking his friend, but Sylvester didn't find out about it until many years later. In the late 1980s, Stallone met model Jennifer Flavin. He called her his ideal, selfless, loving, and so patient. However, this did not prevent Sylvester from constantly having affairs. In 1995, Stallone reined himself in and begged for Jennifer's forgiveness on his knees and hasn't been seen cheating since. A few years later, the couple got married and had three daughters. Interestingly enough, when the journalist from the publication Star decided to give Sylvester an album with all his partners for his 50th birthday, it turned out that there were 595 of them. Among the actor's lovers were the singer Cher, who later called the man a Neanderthal, models Linda Evangelista, Cindy Crawford, Naomi Campbell, and Janice Dickinson. Meanwhile, the actor added several movies to his filmography. Among them were the films The Specialist, with a payout of $12 million, action films Assassins and Judge Dredd for $15 million each, and for the film Daylight, Sylvester earned $17.5 million and overcame another fear of confined spaces. To diversify his resume and play a more serious role, Stallone agreed to star in the thriller Copland for only $80,000. There's got to be a way out of this for everyone. So I say, why don't we all go in tomorrow together? Uh, Freddy, uh, I invited men, cops, good men to live in this town. And these men to make a living. According to him, it was an interesting experience and he enjoyed it, but it did not help his career in any way, as well as his health, because of weight gain for the role. Sylvester got sciatica, heart palpitations, digestive problems, and headaches. This was followed by the failed comedy, an Alan Smithy film, Burn Hollywood Burn, the cartoon ants, where the actor voiced one of the roles. In 2000, the action movie Get Carter premiered, for which Sylvester received $20 million. In the same year, he was awarded another Golden Raspberry as the worst actor of the century. Sylvester wrote the script and starred in his next project, Driven, in 2001, for which he received $20 million. This film became famous 
as the most unrealistic film about motorsports. Then, after the film's detox, with a payout of $20 million, Avenging Angelo, Shade, the comedy Spy Kids 3D, Game Over, for which he received the Golden Raspberry, and the TV series Las Vegas, Stallone returned to his legendary characters in both Rocky Balboa and Rambo. And there isn't one of us that doesn't want to be someplace else. But this is what we do. Who we are. In 2007, he was caught importing banned hormones from Australia to build muscle mass. The actor pleaded guilty and eventually paid more than $11,000 in fines and court costs. In 2009, Stallone appeared in the Bollywood film Damn Love, and a year later, he assembled the old guard and presented the action movie The Expendables to the audience. Yeah, should have shot him when I had a chance. Big Bonnie Ross. Bigger Trent Mouse. What are you doing? Praying for Brook? Could be. Despite being nominated for the Golden Raspberry for directing, the film received high ratings and paid off three times its cost at the box office. In addition, The Expendables made Sylvester the only person in the history of Hollywood who starred in films that got first places in the box office charts for five decades in a row. At the same time, on the set, he once again had to struggle because Sylvester suffered 14 injuries, as well as bronchitis and shingles. In 2011, Sylvester's voice could be heard in the film Zookeeper, and in the same year, he was inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame. Some fans of this sport were not thrilled, because Stallone didn't appear in the ring, but only played in the movies. By the way, the actor is connected with boxing not only through his role as Rocky. In the 1980s, he was the manager of a boxing match, and in the 2000s, he launched the reality show The Contender, where participants fought for a contract in the professional ring. In 2012, the sequel to The Expendables was released, which turned out to be even more spectacular, and Stallone earns $15 million, and soon, he added another movie to his filmography called Bullet to the Head. Stallone received $12 million for that work. This was followed by collaboration with Iron Arnold in the action movie Escape Plan, for which Sylvester received $10 million. The sports film Grudge Match, the drama Reach Me, and the third part of The Expendables. For all these films, he received $15 million. In 2015, Stallone voiced the cartoon Ratchet and Clank and presented another continuation of the story about the legendary boxer Creed, for which he received the Golden Globe Award. You're gonna take a beat, you're gonna take this, you're gonna get knocked down, you're gonna get up, and you're gonna see if you got the right thing. But you gotta work hard. I swear to God, if you're not gonna do it, I'm out. After three years, the second part was released, and between them, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, and the cartoon Animal Crackers. Soon, Stallone appeared in such films as Backtrace, the second and third parts of the fantastic action movie Escape Plan, in 2019, the fifth film about Rambo, with the telling title, Rambo, Last Blood, was released. I want you to feel my rage, my hate. When I reach in your chest and rip out your heart! According to critics, the ending of the story didn't turn out to be very successful. But Sylvester is sure that Rambo can still be called the personification of young soldiers and wants one of the directors to shoot a prequel about his childhood and youth. In 2021, the actor played King Shark in the superhero action movie the Suicide Squad, based on the comics of the same name, and in August 2022, appeared as an aging superhero in Samaritan. Stallone has big plans ahead. He recently returned to television in the crime series Tulsa King, will appear in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and is preparing to release the fourth part of The Expendables. And he also intends to expand his franchise by shooting a TV series and a female version of the beloved blockbuster. It also became known that Sylvester is preparing a reality show with his family members. Although Stallone mostly appears on screen with a gun at the ready, in real life, after one of his friends was shot, he calls for a ban on guns in the United States. Since childhood, 
Sylvester has been fond of painting. Two of his works were even sold for $90,000, but this is only a small part of his fortune, estimated at $400 million. In addition to movies, Sylvester wrote several books about training, tried to launch a sports nutrition company, unsuccessfully, and published the magazine Sly with help tips and interviews with celebrities. This idea was also not very successful, with only four issues published. Another business failure happened with the Planet Hollywood restaurants. Stallone co-owned the chain with Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger, but the establishments went bankrupt. Realizing that he was best at producing media content, in 2018, Sylvester founded his own film studio. He also sometimes agrees to star in commercials. He promoted the British bakery chain Warburton's and even Japanese sausages. But perhaps the most famous advertising campaign with him is the one for the Versace Home Collection. He appeared together with Claudia Schiffer as Adam and Eve. By the way, Stallone was friends with Gianni Versace and was a regular guest of the Italian fashion house shows. But the actor refused one advertising offer. It was in the late 80s when an American beer brand offered him $5 million on the condition that he cut his hair. Sylvester Stallone spends his millions on an impressive collection of cars. In his garage, there are Bergatti Veyron, Aston Martin DBS, Bentley Continental GTC, Ferrari 612 Scaglietti, Ferrari 599 GTB Florano, Mercedes SL65, Mercedes E-Class, Porsche Panamera, Chevrolet Camaro, Ford Mustang, one of the most popular classic cars, Corvette 68, and even a rare Ford from 1932. We must not forget the luxury Cadillac Escalade. Stallone invested more than $400,000 in the design of this car. In addition, Sylvester loves motorcycles and expensive watches. He has a gold Rolex Submariner with a black dial, the cost of which is $20,000, as well as a GMT Master II Rolex made with 18 karat white gold for $7.5,000. However, one should not think that Stallone spends his millions only on himself. For decades, he auctioned off the original props from Rocky and eventually raised about $10,000 for the Canadian Diabetes Association. Stallone donated several million more to the project to combat childhood epilepsy. In the last decades, Sylvester has lived in a mansion in Beverly Hills. Its interiors varied from pompous neoclassicism with columns, curtains, gilding, and statues to modern bright decor. At the end of 2021, Adele bought this house for $58 million. Today, Sylvester owns a mansion in Palm Beach, Florida, with a pool and an outdoor jacuzzi worth $35.4 million, and an estate in Hidden Hills, California, bought in February this year for $18.2 million. The house has five bedrooms with bathrooms, a kitchen with granite countertops, a dining room, and also a stable on the territory. Previously, Stallone owns a villa in Miami with three guest houses, which he sold for $24 million, a house in Coconut Grove, Florida. The actor received $16 million for it in 1999, as well as a house in La Quinta, California. Sylvester and his wife bought a Mediterranean-style mansion in 2010 for $4.5 million and sold it in 2020 for $3.1 million. Sylvester Stallone is a whole era in cinema. Despite critical reviews of his acting and a string of nominations for the Golden Raspberry, he became a fan favorite. And what is your favorite Stallone role? No, you know as fast as you think. I'm beginning to sense that. If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.